Did they fix the wobbling of the screen? Does it look better? All right, so an array of objects. You can have an array of references, just like you can have an array of strings. Well, strings are references, right? Just like you can have an array of ints or an array of doubles or whatever. You can put objects in there. The simplest example of an array of objects, it's actually an array of references to objects, is just an array of strings. And I think we did something like this, but if I do this, string, and I'm going to create an array, SA equals new string, and let's say I want room for five strings. And then I print them out, like with a for loop or something like that, int print this, wait, four parentheses int i is equal to zero, semicolon i less than sa dot length, semicolon i plus plus, and then I just print out i, excuse me, sa subscript i, system dot out dot print ln i plus a quote space quote plus sa subscript i, just so that we can see it say zero, one, two, three, four print our elements out. That should be our output. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we don't have any data in it. It got all initialized to zeros. But when you're talking about reference variables, the value 0 doesn't mean 0, it means null. There are no objects in it. So if I click over to my output and run it, well I guess I need to run it first, I didn't go to output. Right, there we go. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. They're not pointing in any objects. They're just references to nothing right now. But if I assign one of them, like if I come in and do this, SA subscript 0 equals quote Bob, end quote, in subscript, we'll see what it's got. Now the first one actually has data, while the rest of them are references to null. And we could go and we could fill the rest of them up with data, but we're not going to bother. Now that's not too uh, thrilling of an array of objects, but it is an array of objects. It'd be more interesting to keep create our own class, our own array, and then fill it with data and use them. So going back here, let's create a class that's got a first name and a last name. So above per public class, I'm just going to do class name with a capital N. And it's got a string first, comma, last, right, two values. And I'm not going to add getters and setters. I'm a bad programmer. And I'm going to make a constructor so that I can set the name. So a constructor needs to be public. It needs to have the same name as the name of the class, which in this case is name. And if it's just a default constructor, we can use empty parentheses, but it's not. So I'm going to pass in string name, comma, sh wait, string first, comma, string last, right? String first, comma, string last. And inside here, it's going to look like a going to look like a setter, right? A mutator. This dot first equals first, semicolon. This dot last equals last, semicolon. And let's make a two-string method. That'll make it easy to print out. You remember some of my guidelines, data private, methods public, add a constructor if it makes it easy to use the class, add two-string to make it easy to print if that'll help you. So public, string with a capital S, Two string with a capital S, parentheses in parentheses, and we're just going to make a string and then return it. String S equals string dot format parentheses, double quotes, and then the double quotes percent S percent S. Or we could all get it all fancy and like say first equals percent s and last equals percent s, but let's just run with that. Comma and then this dot first, comma, this dot last. In parentheses semicolon, and then let's return that string. 
So now we can create names, right, by doing name x is equal to new name, you know, and put Donald Trump is the first one, and you know, Bob Johnson is the second one, and so on. Make sure it compiles. What are you complaining about? Oh, it wants to add the override annotation. May as well, even though we don't know what that's doing yet. I'm going to do that. Okay, so down here, let's create an array of names. Name, subscript in subscript, that indicates that it's an array. NA for name array, right? Or I could just call it names. Equals new name, subscript. How many names do we want in here? How about five again? Subscript five and subscript. Now let's print out the names of the for each loop rather than the index based loop. That's an index based loop, right? So for parentheses, and this is an array of names. So it's not going to be an array of strings or ints. Our temporary variable is going to be a name. How about n? four parentheses name in colon names for every name in the names array in parentheses let's print it out system dot out dot print ln parentheses in you know what I have no idea if this is going to actually work I think it's going to print out nulls for the ones that have not been created and that it should call the two string method for those that have been created let's find out Right, so it printed out five nulls because we don't have any data. Well, let's add some data to it. Names subscript zero in subscript equals new capital N name and let's call a constructor. So parentheses, semicolon, and inside the parentheses, let's talk to bugs bugs end quote comma quote bunny end quote and I'm going to make another one called names one that's got Daffy Duck in it right so I'm just going to copy that paste it and make some changes names one equals somebody's got a really loud voice that so are watching a video that's really loud Daffy Duck mm -hmm. Thank you. All righty. So it printed out Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. How did it do that? For the ones that were null, it just printed out the word null. Oops, wrong video. Excuse me, wrong page. But for the ones that actually had values, in got filled in with a real value, and so it was able to call in.toString to get it. Now, if that looks a little bit too weird, this could have been done with an index space loop just fine. Four parentheses, int i equals zero, semicolon, i less than names dot length, semicolon, i plus plus, oh, semicolon, and then system dot out dot print ln parentheses, names, subscript i. In parentheses. That would get the same result. If we did not have a two string method, it would just print out kind of some kind of garbage. I'm going to rename my method up here. Once I do that, that line is going to be an error. But I'm just going to call this xxx. Don't make this change. This is just for illustration purposes. Now it's complaining. That override meant that now my syntax is wrong because I don't have the name matching what it should be. Uh, delete that. Now that I don't have a two-string method that it knows about, when I run it, these aren't going to do what they did before. Right? It just printed out two references to the names, kind of like the hashed, you know, address of them. It's not it exactly, but right, it's uh, not pr printing out anything useful. It does have a two-string method that it inherits from the object class, but all the uh, two-string method does is return the class of the name. 
in that hash. So I liked seeing two strings, so I'm going to go ahead and add that back. All right, so now we've got data inside an array. I'm going to fill this one up completely. So I'm going to add elements 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Why don't I just change this to 4 rather than 5 so that I only have to add 4, right? Mickey Mouse. We're crossing universes here. And Donald Duck. And you can step through that array and do things with it and do whatever you like to do with arrays, right? You can access each component of it if you want. If I didn't want to print out the name, the complete name, I could print out the first name, right? In dot first. I'm allowed to do that because I didn't make it private. Now to print out all the first names. Or not. Null pointer exception. Somebody look at my code and see the horrible error that I made. What did I do wrong here? I was trying to fill up the array completely. Look at my indexes. What should that index counter have been? Two. Two and three, yeah. But if I leave it the way it was, this is an indicative of a very common problem, which is that if your array is not completely filled, if it's a partially filled array, then that reference, that array element, just contains a zero. It does not contain a reference to an object. So when you try to access in.first, it blows up. We could get around that by doing something like this. If n not equal to null, like that, right? Or I could just change it so that it really has data, right? Not use a partially filled array. So it did, it did handle it correctly, right? It didn't crash on the null. But really, I wanted it to have full data. That was my goal. OK, so we have an array full of objects. We can get out the first piece of data. We can get out the last piece of data. You know, if there were more members besides first and last, we could access them. We could call a method on each one. We're already doing that with the two-string method. Let's make another method that returns last name, comma, first name. So I went back up to my name class. And we're going to public string, what am I going to call this? Reverse, I don't know. Reversed. Parentheses, in parentheses. And instead of doing this, I'm just going to copy those two lines and make a change. Right? Because it does need to still build it and return it. But it's going to return last comma first. So percent s comma, you see that change that I just made there. And I'm going to change this to say, this dot last comma this dot first. And I'm doing that just to be able to show calling a method that's in the class from the array references. So for my index based for loop, instead of printing out the string, calling to string, I'm going to print out name.reversed, or whatever that variable is called. Down here, instead of printing out names, subscript i, and just calling to string, we're going to print out names, subscript i, dot, reversed, parentheses, in parentheses. And it's printing them out right, last, comma, first. Maybe we could come up with a special version of it that you could specify what order you wanted them, right? Whether you wanted first comma last or last comma first. Specify that in the arguments for the method call. But I think that's really enough. So that is an array of objects. You could write a method that would accept an array of objects. Let's do that. Let's add a method to our class up here public static void why don't we build a string
that is all the elements of the array, excuse me, all the elements, yeah, all the elements of the array put together. So make string from array, parentheses in parentheses, open brace, close brace, but in here I need to be able to pass that in. It needs to be an array of names, so I'm going to say name, so open subscript, close subscript, NA, right? That's just my array, or the whole word array, or something like that. Let's add a comment. Return the string of all names in the array. And we're going to try to make it kind of good so that we don't add any that are null. So there might be an if something equals null. But let's declare our return string and set it empty, equal to an empty string. And then let's use a for loop. A for each loop is as good as anything else. So for parentheses name space in colon array for every name in the array store that name into temporary variable in and then s plus equals in dot to string semicolon but I said that I didn't want uh, nulls to crash it so I'm going to say if parentheses in not equal to null in parentheses. Once we have built our string, we can return it. Maybe it would be neat to put like braces around it, like make it a open with a square brace and close with a square brace, something like that. So I'm going to modify my string declaration with that. And at the end, I'm going to clo add, close it with s plus equals quote closing square, end quote, semicolon, and then just return that string. Oh, what have I got going on here? If I, I've made a mistake here. I'm trying to return a string, but what type did I declare my method? Void, that's a mistake, so make that a string. I cannot type the word string correctly. Something about the N and the I. All right. So now that's okay. Did I have to put dot to string here? No. Since it's already a string, it would just try to concatenate a string. And if you don't put dot to string, it checks the object to find its to string method. But I think it makes it look clear what it's doing. Okay, so down here we're going to call that method which I need to remind myself. Make string from array. You know what, I'll never be able to type that, so I'm just going to double click on it, copy it, come back down here. So down here, after I've built my array, let's call that method. String result or string names underscore text equals make string from array parentheses names in parentheses semicolon and let's print that out system dot out dot print ln parentheses quote names underscore text equals name and names underscore text equals end quote plus names type names underscore text. So we can pass an array of elements, an array of object references, just as easily as we could pass in an array of doubles or whatever. And it did, right? Would have been nice if we had extra spaces between them or commas or something. How about a space? I'm going to go and modify this 
and do a quote space plus quote space quote. I don't know, just something to make it look a little bit better than it did, right? And then maybe if I had an opening space here, I'm being really picky, but why not put an opening space there and then I think the output's going to be pretty done. Right? Okay. There we go. Why didn't I want to print a comma after each one? Because there would have been a comma here and an ending comma before the closing brace. I didn't want to have to hurt my brain trying to figure out how to fix that. I can think of a way, but I'm not going to bother. Okay, the right way to do it would be to use an index-based array. And when i was equal to the length of the array minus 1, you know it's the last element, and so you don't add a comma to it. But, yeah, I think we're good enough there. Are we all good, or do I need to scroll up or down? How are we? I do need a little bit. Okay. Just a tiny bit. A little bit more. stuff underneath the, the for loop. Okay. This is the end of main. And down here's the end of the class. Whoops. Go back. Down here's the end of the class. All right, this is hurting my brain because I don't see where I declared string s a probably up here so I'm going to grab that declaration from the top you don't have to do this but I want it to be near to where it was actually used I'm going to cut string s a from the top and paste it right here just because I was wondering where the heck that variable came from and notice that it's hoping me it's hoping I will make a for each loop instead out of this And I can't say that I think that's a great idea because what if it was null? I think that would crash. I think that that would be a serious error. If I, I'll scroll back down. I'm sorry, I got distracted. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thanks, NetBeans, for suggesting something that's an error. All right, so never just blindly accept their changes. Why was it an error? Because since one of the elements was a null and they used this for each loop, that names could be null. And then when you try to call name.reverse, it was accessing a null reference. All right. We got it going now, or do I need to? Okay. So an array of objects. This is their name and this is their sales amount. Each clerk, each one of these is an object, except it's a partially filled array, and so the last one is null. It starts off with everything being null until you create some elements to put in there, just like we did with the name elements. For each loop, we've talked about the for each loop. For and then the data type, like if it's an array of strings, you just put string there right and then the name of the temporary variable that all of these are getting stored into and then the name of the array right like that just change it to whatever you need right if it's an array of integers do that whatever for each element reference for each string in s array so here's a for each loop example that prints the numbers in the primes array yeah we see that all right, so I want to kind of veer off since we have about 30 minutes left and we've hit the end of a chapter. I probably shouldn't veer off. Let's not veer off. But I want to talk about circular arrays. Do that. I'll resist the urge. Okay, so the next chapter uses something called string arrays. Excuse me, array lists. It uses array lists. What's an array list? Well, the problem with an array is that once you fill it up, too bad, right? If you wanted to stick the fifth character on here, Yosemite Sam or, you know, whoever, 
it's too bad. We allocated this to be four long. So your code could go and create a larger array and then copy all the elements into it. But instead, here's what we're going to do. Array with a capital A, list with a capital L, subscript. And what's this going to be an array of? Let's make it an array of integers. Unfortunately, I can't put I and T there, which is what I would want to if I knew enough but not enough, a little but not enough. Instead, I have to put the whole word integer there. And then close, angle, and let's give it a name. Colors equals new array list with a capital L, capital A, capital L open angle, close angle, open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. Now that looks weird. Well, for one reason it looks weird is because we're going to have to add the import for java.util. Right? And while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to scroll up here and change that to just import java.util.asterisk. Fix that little problem. All right. So, this looks weird, but what does this say? This is a kind of a genericized syntax. And we can actually learn how to set up our own thing like this. What is it saying? That this array list is made of integers. What is integer with a capital I? It's a wrapper class that holds a number just like an int, but it has more powers to it. Like if I did this, mm -hmm. integer ii equals 3. And then I type ii dot. It gives me a whole bunch of options, right? Whereas if it was a real integer, it wouldn't have any options because a primitive data type does not have any methods. But this one does. So anyways, let's add some. OK, why did I call it integer of colors if it's not colors? That was pretty dumb. Colors, let's make them strings. Now, let's just change the name of this to like scores. Right, we're going to add some scores. All right, now let's add some data to it. Scores dot add parentheses 100 in parentheses semicolon what are you complaining about the collection is only added to, yeah I know scores dot add earn a 95 scores dot add 90 now let's print our array out we can use an index or we can use a for each. For each is like perfectly built for these. So for parentheses, and what's the data type of this? Integer. I N T E G E R. I. Or how about V for value? I don't care. Colon scores. Now, one thing that people like to do to be clever. And don't do this because I'm going to undo it, is to say for every score in the scores array. But I guarantee at a certain point you're going to confuse yourself and tack on an S where you didn't mean to and leave the S off where you meant to have it. So I'm going to call that for every value in the scores array list. Let's just print it out. System dot out dot print ln parentheses quote score space, end quote, plus value. Now what are you offering to convert it to? You can use functional operations, no way. All right, so there we go, and it printed out our three scores. Big deal, we could have done that with an array. Yeah, but could an array have deleted an element from the middle of it? Sure, you can make it null, but then it would just sit there, right? How do we delete from an array? Well, let's see if we can find a method that looks likely. Scores dot remove based on, well, if that was element zero, that's going to be element one, and that's going to be element two. Let's remove element zero. Our student's going to be unhappy that we took away their, their 100. But they'll live. And let's print it out again. So just copy and paste that print statement, that for loop. And 
and there we go, right? It printed it out one time, 195.90, and the second time we just printed 95 and 90. You can also change an element. What if that first one was not supposed to be a 95, but it was supposed to be a 98? Scores dot set. Well, it's the new first, right? So, and I want to set that to a 98. Set first element to 98. That's my comment for here. Delete first element. So the second element then becomes the first. And let's print it out one more time, but we really ought to put something clever in our output just to kind of distinguish them. I don't know, how about a four spaces in front of that one and two spaces in front of that one, just so I get some visual indication of the difference. Right. So our list was this originally. We deleted the first element. Our list was that. We set the first element to 98, and now our list is that. Well, that's so much fun. Why don't we go back here and type in scores dot and find out what else we can do with it. Scores dot contains. You can look for an object. We can check to see if the score 97 is in there. For each. Well, that, that's pretty weird. That's functional programming. Um, it's above my pay grade to teach. Index of. Find the index of object O. Remove. We've done remove. Remove all. To array. That's kind of cool. You have an array list and you need to make an array out of it. You can do that. All right, so there's lots of things you can do. The big deal is that you can append to it and you can delete from it and you can search for values really easily, really nicely. It's a good data structure for holding lists of data. And it should be your first choice. If you have to hold a series of numbers or a series of strings or whatever, you should go for array lists rather than arrays. Because with arrays, you have to guess at the maximum size, you know, and then it becomes a problem if you ever exceed that size. You have to figure out what you're going to do. You're just going to forbid them from adding anything to it or what? Along with array lists, there are other abstract data types. That's known as an abstract data type. Abstract because it's a data type that can hold more than one different kind of data. We can make an array list of names if we wanted to. I wonder if that'll work. I may not actually use it, but I'm going to play with it. Array list less than name with capital N greater than. I'm going to call it in list equals new. Array list, capital A, capital L, less than, greater than, open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. So what is this syntax, that less than, greater than? What that's saying is, oh, just go ahead and use the type that you defined up here. I could stick that type in here again a second time between angles, but there's no need to. You can leave that out. And why are there parentheses here? Because this is actually a class. Array list is a class, and we have to call it constructor. All right, so I expect that worked. What if we wanted to add something to it? In list dot add parentheses, and let's make a new name. New name with a capital N, open parentheses, open quote, and bullwinkle. end quote, comma, moose, end quote, end parentheses, end parentheses, semicolon. Now this is called an anonymous object. We never gave that a name, right? We created a variable and we added it to our list without ever having given it a name. But that's hardly any different than what we were doing up here, right? Where I did names is equal to whatever. I could have created a name object and then added it with dot add just as easily if I felt like it. 
then we could use a for loop to print it out, but I don't think we need to do that. Let's actually go to the PowerPoint now that I've hearkened off. Oh, by the way, gang, I'd like for everybody to do this feedback for, for Professor Thompson. If you haven't done it, yeah, I made it kind of look like it was for the students taking a class remotely, but I'd also like for the in-class students to do it, so just click on quizzes and go over there. It's just a couple questions about the homework, about whether the difficulty level seems about right or too hard, too easy, that kind of stuff. So I'd appreciate it if everybody would do that. Don't have to do it now. But all right. Collections. I call them abstract data types. Collection is a better term for them. Collections hold groups of data, right? Array lists are one kind of collection. There's a whole bunch of collections. We could talk about stacks. We could talk about queues. We could talk about lists, vectors. We can talk about what some um, tech, excuse me, some languages call them dictionaries, mm -hmm. but this one calls them maps. So the array list class, it provides a basic functionality that comes with a standard array plus extra. The basic functionality, the array list stores an ordered collection of values and lets you access them via an index. You call dot .get. You don't just use the square braces. Instead, you call dot .get in the parentheses and you specify the number and it'll give it to you. Get whatever value is stored in it. The extra functionality is that the list grows and shrinks dynamically by inserting and deleting elements at any specified location. How to create an array list object. First, you have to have your import. Then you use the syntax import, followed by the type. And this type has to be, come back, a reference type. It can't be a primitive data type. So I could not use int. I had to use the whole word integer with a capital I. I could not use d with a lowercase d. That's a primitive. If I make it an uppercase D, that's the wrapper class for, for, uh, for doubles. And then the reference variable, what, I'm, what am I going to call my list? I'm on the D list. And then new array list, right? Just like we saw. There we go. For example, here's how to initialize an array of the student class. Excuse me, an array list of the student class. That's the class name. That's the variable name. Ah, here's something interesting. Somebody decided that these things were called the diamond operator. Yeah. Can't say I've ever heard that. Except that, that slide, and I hadn't noticed it. So the array list is part of Java's API. Let's compare the syntax for creating array lists and arrays. Here's an array list of students. Here's an array of students. The array list, you specify what type of data it is. You don't specify a size because it'll grow and shrink as need be. With an array, you use the square braces to indicate that it's an array. And then inside the constructor call, you provide the number of elements. So to add elements to it, you call dot add. If this was an array of strings, we would call dot add computer scientist dot add and then parentheses quote Ada Lovelace. And then another one, Grace Hopper. And then another one, Marissa Mayer. So what is API? It stands for application programming interface. It's the interface of a huge library of pre-built Java classes. You don't need to know the internals. I don't know how array list works. I have some ideas, but I certainly don't know how to do it. To interface with them, to work with them, I use their public methods. So to use them, I need to know what type of arguments to pass to it. For example, when I called dot .get, I had, to, I had to pass in an integer. The standard way to show the information of a method is within its header. Here's the API heading for the math classes POW method. 
right? It takes a number, it takes a power, looks like it can take doubles, so you can raise something to the power of 0 0.3 if you wanted, which would be about the cube root, not exactly. It's static, meaning that we don't have to create an object in order to call it, because it's a class method. So with a standard array, you use square brackets to access the elements. Instead, we call the get method. Array list dot get parentheses zero would get the first element. Parentheses one would get the second, and so on. If it refers to a non-existent element, then a runtime error occurs. So if I go over here, I've only got one element of my in list array. So if I system dot out dot print ln parentheses, what well, heck? How about this? Name n1 equals n list dot get parentheses zero in parentheses, and then we could print that out. System dot out dot print ln parentheses n1 in parentheses semicolon. Now let's get the second one. n1 equals n list dot get parentheses one in parentheses. And that's going to blow up, so I'm not going to even add any more code after that. Since there's only one element in the array, there's only index zero. Why do I have that on the screen? We don't need that ticking down where everybody can see it. And it says exception in thread main inside the array list class range check because it's out of range. And it's telling me where in my code that error occurred, so I could just click on it and go look and oh, okay. So what I might want to do is I might want an if statement, right, that compares, make sure that the length of the array is one or greater. So I'm going to create a variable called index. Int index is equal to one because that's the one that I want. And if, parentheses, index is greater than or equal to in list dot size, parentheses in parentheses. I don't know why they made it size rather than the length, but they did. So if the index is greater than or equal to the size, we know that element does not exist. System.out.println parentheses quote, index space end quote, plus index, plus quote space does not exist, end quote in parentheses semicolon, else, open curly brace, let's get that value, except let's change that one to the word index. So n1 equals n list dot get parentheses index, and then let's just print it out. System dot out dot print ln parentheses. Let's get all fancy and make it print s, print s. So index is an integer, which you print out with percent %d. And then let's print out the string, which is percent %s. And then a backslash n to go to the next line. And then the end quote, and then the comma. And we're going to fill in this first placeholder with the number index, and the second one with the n1 variable we got out. Let's call n1.reversed, parentheses, in parentheses and then one more closed parentheses and a semicolon. And I put print S here, I meant to make that print F. I said one thing and typed another, print F. So since this index does exist, does not exist, I'm gonna get that error message. But at least it didn't blow up. And if I change this to a zero, then since that index does work, it's going to print it out just fine. Element zero is moose comma bullwinkle. So the index parameter specifies the position you're trying to get. So since it's an array list, you don't do square braces followed by, you know, x. Instead, you call dot get parentheses x. Get that specific element. 
Note the E return type for the array list get method. E stands for element. It represents the data type of the array list element. So if we declared it with capital I integer, then E is capital I integer. That's its return type. And the set method allows us to change a value in it. We can make a new name and set it as the first element of the array. Name into equals new name with a capital N. Double quote, Charlie, end quote, comma, quote, Brown, end quote, in parentheses, zero. Now let's set our array list. I mean, we could just delete that first element of the array list and then insert this, but we're not going to. Instead, we're going to do in list dot set parentheses, and we want to change the first element, zero, comma, into, right? So now if we printed the array out, instead of saying bullwinkle moose, it's going to say Charlie, Charlie Brown. Do you remember how when we tried to print out an array, it didn't look good, it just printed out a, an address, right? I wonder what would happen if we just tried to print out an array list. I don't remember. System.out.println parentheses in list in parentheses. I wonder if it's going to make a pretty format of it or if it's just going to print the name of the class and the address. Honestly, I'm doing this just because I don't remember. It did print it out. That's cool. If you want a, a quick and dirty way of printing the contents of an array list out, you do that. So what was our other array list up here? We had one called in list and we had one called scores. All right. System.out.println parentheses scores in parentheses semicolon. It's just a quick and dirty way of printing it out. The user probably doesn't want to see their data in that format, but there it is. So maybe for a while we'll skip writing four next loops, right? And just print out the variable itself as long as we are using array lists. What happens if you try to tack on something into an array list way further down? Like you try to set it at the wrong value? That's a good point. Well, what if you set a value like 99? Well, let's set it to 1 just to see if it'll, you know, append that value. It blows up, so, you know, anything else larger would also fail. Very good question. Like if you said, I want this to be at element 99. Tell me I have had this going. Okay, good. We're just going to get that error, unfortunately. So I better change that back to zero because we only have one element in it. Draw a picture of the colors array list after this code fragment executes. I like that. Draw a picture. Okay. So, we add red to it. We add green to it. We add blue to it. So, if we were drawing a picture, red, green, blue. And then we calculate a variable. Well, this is index 0. That's index 1. That's index 2, and mixed colors is equal to dot get 0 plus dot get 1. So we have a variable named mixed colors, mixed color, which is equal to green, no, red, green. Now that's weird. There's no such thing as the color red, green, but whatever. All righty, and then they set 2 to mixed color. So we have red, green, and red, green. That's the end result of that. Add, we've talked about. Clear, you can remove, you can nuke the entire list. Index of searches for the first occurrence of the parameter within the list. 
If it's found, return its index position. If not found, return negative 1. That's just like the method that we wrote, right? That return negative 1 if not found. So you could search for a specific value. Our scores array had two values in it. Let's go and tack some more values on it, just for giggles. Scores dot add parentheses 50 in parentheses semicolon. Just copy and paste that and type in some numbers. Who cares what numbers, right? And now let's look for a value. Let's make a target value. Int target, and we would ask the user, right, for this or something, but I'm going to pick one that already exists. Target, int target equals 32. And I'm going to search for it. I'm going to see if that is in the array. I'm going to do so by using the index of method. So int found at just telling me what index it found it at, equals scores dot index of, with a capital O, parentheses, target, in parentheses, semicolon. Well, at least it didn't blow up. So, let's print out what we found, right? System dot out dot print f parentheses quote percent s just so that we can print the array itself the array list excuse me percent d for target and found at percent d is the index where it was found and then before the end of our quote backslash n after our comma we're going to put the scores array we could do scores dot two string if we wanted to make it really blatant what we were doing, but we didn't need to. Comma, our target, because that's what we're looking for. Comma, and then where we found it at. Found at, semicolon. And it should say that it's element. Well, we already had two elements in it, 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I'm counting correctly, it's going to say it was found at index 4. It was. What if it doesn't find it? There is no value 33 here. So it obviously did not find it. Dot size returns the number of elements in the array. Is empty returns true if the list contains no elements. So there's two ways to check to see if it's empty. One is you could just call size. And if size is true, I mean, if, if the size is equal to zero, you know the list is empty. Let's clear out our scores. Scores dot clear, parentheses in parentheses. Now let's find out if the list is empty. If, parentheses, scores dot size, Parentheses in parentheses equal equals zero. Close parentheses. System dot out dot print ln empty. I'm going to copy that print statement because I'm going to do the same thing in a minute. If parentheses scores dot empty parentheses in parentheses print system dot out dot and I'm sorry it was supposed to be is empty isn't it let me go look here yep is empty with a capital E maybe that's why I don't like using it I'd rather just check to see if the size was zero rather than use a special value why because this works for arrays as well I could just call dot length and check to see if the array length was zero there is no special method to tell you if the array has a length of zero, although that's a pretty weird state. You can't have an array that's got a length of zero. Anyways, either one works. So of your array list functions, array list methods, please remember dot get parentheses x, dot remove parentheses x, where x is the index value, dot set parentheses x comma 
value, whatever you're changing. Dot size, parentheses in parentheses. Why not tack on is empty? Dot is empty with a capital T. Dot to string, to, just to print it out, right? Actually works this time, unlike arrays. What else? What else? Dot clear to nuke the array. Array list. What's another way of wiping out the array list? We could just write a loop that would print. I mean, that would call remove on every element in the array, right? So while parentheses in list dot oh I'm inside a comment that's why it's not working close my comments star slash while in list dot size parentheses in parentheses is greater than zero that means that there's data in the array so system dot out dot print ln parentheses quote deleting space end quote plus In list dot get parentheses zero in parentheses and then let's delete it. In list dot remove parentheses zero in parentheses semicolon. That'll just remove every element from our in list array. So Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse and all of them are gonna have been well deleted. And it seems like I've got oh a comment there. All right. Deleting Charlie Brown. Apparently we only had one element in it. Yeah. Oh, I guess that's right. We got rid of Bullwinkle Moose at one point. Okay. Fine. You overrode it. That's right, I replaced it rather than it appending a new one. Correct. All right. Anybody need this code on the screen any longer than that? Oh, that one that checks to see if it's in the array. The one that it's index of. Yeah. So, wherever you feel like. Putting in dot index of parentheses value. And just remember that it returns negative one if not found. Returns minus one if not found. And all of these, if you pass in a bad value of x, if you pass in a bad index, it's going to crash. About to the point where I want to close up shop. So printing or concatenating an array list. If you attempt to print or concatenate an array list, the array list returns a comma separated list of elements. We've done that. Kato Finnick, Katniss, all right, a Hunger Games fan. Storing primitives in an array list. As mentioned previously, it has to store references, so you can't create an array list of type int. It has to be the whole word integer with a capital I has to be the whole word double with a capital D. Ever since Java 5.0, the wrapping process is done automatically. Here's what I mean by that. In olden days, if you made a new integer, you couldn't do that. You'd have to do this. Integer I, I, I equals new integer, parentheses three, in parentheses. And I don't know what new magic that they uh, added to the language to make this work, but this is called boxing. Whoops, integer. It boxes that four and puts it inside an object of type integer. Unnecessary boxing integer. See, it's even cautioning me that I don't need to do it that way. And value is never used. 
convert the integer constant to a different radix. Let me split definition. What? Why would I care? Why would I want to do that? There's absolutely no reason to do that. Okay. It's little warnings and suggestions can be a, a, a little bit odd. All right. So that's why we're able to call dot add up here without having to do this. Before Java 5, and we're well past Java 5, I would have had to add my numbers like this. Thankfully, I don't have to do that. Right? The syntax is gnarly. Good thing we don't have to do that. And if you were going to get the value, if you weren't just going to get it as a string by calling to string, you'd have to get the value out. And anyways, boxing and unboxing is the conversion of a primitive data type to the wrapper class. Stock average stores integers in an array list then calculates the average stock value. We've done that. Why is an array list appropriate for calculating a stock average? Because we don't know how many stock elements we're going to be putting in it. An array list using anonymous objects in a for each loop. This is doing just what I said. It creates a new bear on the fly. Brand new object does not store it in a variable. Instead, it just adds it to the array. So there is no variable that contains a reference to that specific bear. That reference is just tucked away in the array. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using anonymous objects. And in fact, that's probably recommended so that you're not having to create temporary variables. You could. You could create temporary variables to hold these things if you wanted to. See if you like the way this looks. Um, name Chucky equals new name parentheses Chucky end quote comma cheese end quote right and then we can add that to our end list end list dot add Chucky and if we so chose we could reuse that variable right Chucky is equal to you know and I could create a new Chucky <laughs> you know, sound like a horror movie alrighty yeah Chucky 2 end quote comma quote cheese isn't cheese spelled with an s anyways but I don't know about the, the restaurant maybe it's spelled with a g a, a z for the restaurant and then we could add that again in list dot add parentheses chucky why do that if we can just use an anonymous object in list dot add parentheses new name capital n parentheses quote Chucky, end quote, comma, quote, the third, end quote, in parentheses, in parentheses, semicolon. This works perfectly well, holding the uh, reference to that object in a temporary variable and then adding it to the array list. But if you can do it that easily, why not do it in one line rather than two? I think it's just as clear. Actually, I think it's more clear. All right, so I'm going to save the homework for Thursday's lecture. So let's go ahead and stop and upload this and be done for the day.